On November 8th, 2022, the flawed but wonderful franchise that was Project Cars has officially been killed by EA. Despite the fourth game being in development for the last two years, that was expected to go back to the roots of the first two games, it still wasn't enough for EA to keep the franchise on. For this video, I will talk about the Project Cars franchise's origins, its impact on sim racing, and finally answer the question to why it was killed off and the effects that it's had in the sim racing space. Let's get started. Project Cars was created by Slightly Mad Studios, who had previously developed the Need for Speed Shift games, more on them later, as well as the appalling Fast and Furious Crossroads. The less you know about that game, the better. The brains behind Slightly Mad was Ian Bell, a rather controversial figure in the sim racing scene. This man was behind the formation of Slightly Mad, as he founded the company in 2009, after he bought the business and assets from his former studio Blimey Games, who developed the GTR franchise. With a baseline set, Slightly Mad Studios got to work on the Need for Speed Shift series, which was an arcade track racer which was a spiritual successor to Need for Speed Pro Street, aimed at taking on Forza and Gran Turismo. It was met with quite positive reviews, especially for the in-game effects it made, and the detailed cockpit view and damage model. Plus, it also had pretty extensive customization too, so it was a Need for Speed game at heart. Shift 1 was released in 2009, and it was followed up with Shift 2 Unleashed, which was released in March 2011. This game was actually revealed, rather oddly enough, on the same day that Hot Pursuit 2010 was released. In fact, if you had Hot Pursuit 2010, you could play the reveal trailer in that game. Shift 2 was also praised well by critics, but it was criticised for not really expanding heavily on the first game. But little did we know that that game would go on to form a greater foundation for an even greater product. Project Cars was set to be an ultra realistic crowdfunding racing simulator, where players and the dev team would raise money to create their dream title, without funding or interference from a publisher. This is what the Cars in Project Cars stands for. Community Assisted Racing Simulator. Once $5 million were raised, Slightly Mad Studios got to work on the new game, and in 2015 Project Cars was completed and released. Boasting 79 cars, 30 tracks, and the introduction of the new Madness physics engine, Project Cars won as a serious game, with dynamic weather, ruthless AI, a tyre and fuel model, as well as loads of different car classes, and a console release, which is quite unthinkable compared to un other sims. Project Cars also had a much more detailed career mode, where the player could go down any path they liked. This was a personal favourite feature of mine in the Project Cars series. Project Cars 1 was as user friendly as it was ruthless. There were ways that you could customise your entire racing experience based on time or weather and what cars you raced against, and the addition of the beautifully tense music by Stephen Basted, as well as having former stake Ben Collins be a race engineer, Project Cars 1 had a vibe that was totally unmatched compared to its competition. Despite there being a good few bugs and glitches at launch, and some physics issues, Project Cars 1 still created a large and loyal fan base. And within two years of the first game's release, we got the new and improved Project Cars 2. A downside to Project Cars 2 over Project Cars 1 was that some gamers felt that the physics just weren't as improved or as refined as they could have been. But that didn't stop Project Cars 2 becoming a fan favourite. With over 100 cars more compared to its predecessor, as well as double the tracks, the introduction of Rallycross and some snow stages, another mega soundtrack, improved online features and an even bigger career mode, Project Cars 2 improved in so many other areas compared to the first games. It was the perfect sequel to the first game. But then, we got the third game. Sometime in 2018, Ian Bell revealed that Project Cars 3 would be a more arcade game, like Need for Speed Shift. And the following year, Codemasters purchased Slightly Mad Studios. This controversial shift in gameplay was set up to attract a wider audience, and it did that for all the wrong reasons. Some fans believed that it was Codemasters who encouraged them to make another Need for Speed Shift-like title. But nevertheless, loyal fans felt betrayed by the shift, and you need to remember that some of these people actually donated their own money to help to the development of the first two games. Project Cars 3 was released in August 2020, where it was slated for losing its soul and being drastically different to their previous titles. I believe if they called this game something else, like Project Cars Evo or something, 
it would have been much better received. In spite of the damaged image, Ian Bell announced that Project Cars 4 was in development and it would be going back to the roots of the first and second game. Let this be a lesson to never forget where you came from. In February 2021, an EA ship's banner was thrown into the works when they bought Codemasters for an eye-watering $1.2 billion. Once the purchase was made, things didn't seem to change too much, which some people thought was a bit weird because EA loved changing things and ruining it. But then the summer of 21 came around, and this is when Codemasters CEO and CFO stepped down, and in October, Ian Bell would follow suit. As a result, Slightly Mad Studios were now reporting directly to EA, just like they did while they were developing Need for Speed Shift. And just like that, the Project Cars franchise was in limbo. Until last week, when EA announced that Project Cars would be discontinued. This was partially, if not entirely, due to the third game being so bad, and tarnishing the franchise's reputation. With these in mind, it was clear that EA didn't want anything to do with Project Cars. EA also mentioned that they were moving focus to their licensed and open world games, such as F1 and Need for Speed, and WRC will be adding to the roster in the next year or two. But unfortunately, Project Cars was neither of those. It wasn't a licensed game, nor an open world one. And the same was said about Grid and Dirt. Although Dirt will be rebranded, Grid is likely to be getting the chop as well. But it's not entirely all bad news. It is rumoured that EA are working on a new SimK track racer that will combine the best of Grid and Project Cars together. But as for a sim racing title, EA will not be making one. But that's not to say that Ian Bell isn't making one. Ian Bell has created a new studio called Mildly Annoyed Studios, <laughs> that's funny, which will create a new GTR game called GTR Revival. This will be the first GTR game in lord knows how long. And, according to Ian Bell's Twitter, they have Ben Collins on board, as well as Stephen Basted on the music cues, and other slightly mad workers who are passionate about sim racing as much as we are. His goal is to try to get as many of the slightly mad studios developers to work for his new company, so that they can basically make the Project Cars 4 that we won't be getting. But, for the meantime, all we can do is wait for a new title. But if they can get their hands on what they made of Project Cars 4 so far, it could be out sooner than we expected. But if you're impatient, then you're in luck, because Automobilista 2 uses the same madness engine as Project Cars 2. But its online and career mode may not be as good, but you never know, the game is still getting updated frequently, so those could be implemented and approved. But in the meantime, Project Cars is unfortunately dead. But we must not forget the impact that it made. So what do you think? Are you disappointed by Project Cars? Are you excited about the new GTR game? Let me know down below and please remember to like this video, share it with your friends and please subscribe. I'm quite close to 10,000 subscribers and I would love to be able to hit that very very soon. Anyway, that's it for me now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys all very very soon.